He's being nice. Yeah, no, he's good. Yeah. Right, you let me know. I'm ready. Let me know if I gotta let a wolf know. That he's nah, gotta, he's he's gotta be he's friendly good. to my people. Nah, he's good. He, honest, he honestly looks a lot, a lot bigger. No, a lot smaller on Instagram. On the everything. photos. I'm very surprised at how big he is. Yeah, that's what a lot of people say. But uh, it's my homie, man. He's a shit. He accepted you into the pack, and that's it now. That's it. Yeah. I'm Tom's, gr- Tom's going to get me lean for summer, Kenji. We can't be, can't be getting nasty with Tom because... <laughs> I'm a gorilla, but I, feel, I fit in with the wolves. I love that, man. I try to. At least, I try to. At You're least. awesome. Hey, look, real quick, a little range. Cheers, man. A little range cheers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Appreciate that. Mm-hmm. Ah, Actually, man. It makes me burp. I know. So that, that was actually with Terrence Ruffin on the last podcast. We had... Um, I got a bunch of seltzers. I got a bunch of the uh, liquid death seltzers, and I kept, we both kept burping in the middle of the podcast. Like, every kind of, he like, he'd be like, yeah, you know, it's what, I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> the fucking bubbles. I had the rain. That made me burp like crazy, and then the bang just made me crack out. That was the first time I ever did that, and I'd never do it again. It's garbage. Uh, I mean, with what you do, though, you definitely need that caffeine, so. Mm-hmm. And a flat version would suck. Yeah, no, definitely. That shit sucked. That shit, I don't know. It was like some crack or some shit. And the, actually... Speaking of crack, I had a pre-workout that was called crack. It was by Dark Labs, Marcello's little worker, Danny. Shout out to Danny. He's a beast of a kid, powerlifter and a wrestler. He gave it to me, and it had fucking DMA in it. Oh, the original shit. Do you know what DMA is? Fuck yeah, man. The original Jack 3D? They put that shit in meth. Yeah. I had it yesterday, like 45 minutes in. I'm good. I'm dogging my workout. I'm doing my sandbag. And now after like an hour, I start to crash. And like I'm sitting down in the corner like this on the bench. And I'm like, this isn't good. I'm yeah, fucked. Something's up. Something's up. Something's not good. Something's not, not right. And then after like an hour after that, I was fine. But that shit was cracked. That shit was terrible. That's how they took all that shit off the market, man. Yeah, no. Jack was, 3D, I never had that one. Oh, so, dude, you felt like you were on a spaceship. Yeah. That's, you took that shit and then all of a sudden just you were, you, you, you would blink twice and you were in the middle of your lift. Mm-hmm. You're like, what the fuck? How did I get here? Mm-hmm. Did I drive to the gym like this? That's what a lot of people told me. I never had it, though. Honestly, I didn't start taking pre-workout until probably like three years ago. And you started training specifically more intense with a more hit style focus how long ago so the what i do now that was two years ago when covid hit but after i got into jiu-jitsu i'd say almost five years five six years ago i had to gear my training towards that because the regular bodybuilding workouts it wasn't it was too linear Bench, squat, deadlift, shoulder presses. Like, I get it. Like, that's all said well and done. But it's like, it was very linear. And in jiu-jitsu, for example, as you have seen, you need to be bendy. You need to be flexible. You need to be able to move your spine and stuff like that, your hips. So at that point, I started doing more of the hit and the explosive training because at that point, I needed to train for my sport. And the bodybuilding style, stuff like that, it was just wear and tear on my body. So if I did fucking bicep curls and I did shoulder presses for an hour or two and then I went to go into jujitsu, my arms would just be gassed. I wouldn't be able to grip the gi. I wouldn't be able to grab somebody's wrist because my arms would be so fatigued. Or even then, my nervous system and everything would just be so tired. And that's how I popped my knee because I did a two-hour workout in the morning and then my dumb ass went to go train jujitsu at night. I had somebody in a single leg, me not aware. I'm just tired. I'm gassed. Bulldozes into me. Big pop on my right knee. So after that, I switched more sore towards the functional and unconventional shit because it got my heart rate up. It kept me stable and mobile for jujitsu and MMA training, everything else. But also it's fun because it's a different different style of workout. And when COVID happened, I had nothing else. The gyms were closed. Everything was fucked. So I had no choice. So I bought a couple of kettlebells, I bought a couple of clubs, and then bada bing, bada boom. As time passed on, I brought that to the gym I'm at now, and that kind of turned into my little style. I, I kind of just like dove right into it. I, it wasn't planned. It wasn't anything like that. So I, at that point, it was just went right in there. I just switched it up because you had to adapt. At that did, you, point. did you miss doing the jujitsu? Yeah. Sometimes I do. And you still do. don't do it? I still don't do it because a lot of guys in jujitsu, they don't give a shit. They don't care because a and, lot of, and you mean they don't care as in, inju- they don't care as in hurting like it, someone else or yeah, injury injury. Cause that's their life. They compete. These guys are fighting in Abu Dhabi trials, ADCC. That's the top no gi tournament in the world. They fight for worlds, IBJJF, gi, no gi, whatever. So a 
lot of these guys don't teach, but if they do, at the end of the day, it's still their life. So with me, when I was training jiu-jitsu, yeah, I would love to get after it, but when I got hurt, I was training with somebody that was very overzealous and they didn't really know what they were doing. They weren't aware of their surroundings. It's like, listen, like, I get it. Like you want to train hard and you want to, you want to get after it. You want to be ready for competition. But at the end of the day, if you start hurting your training partners, then that's bad on you because you're not going to have that training partner, that guy. And in jiu-jitsu, it's not weights. It's not dumbbells. It's not clubs. It's not kettlebells. It's people. So if you injure your training partner on purpose and that guy is a guy that gets after with you and you, you're able to do your rounds and work with submissions that you can't really do with white or blue belts, but you could do with purple, brown, and black, that's fine. But a lot of guys, that's all they do. That's their life. So they don't care if they injure you. They don't care if they get injured. Most jiu-jitsu guys, their knees are fucked. Fucked. They've had ACL surgery, MCL, LCL. So the reason why I stopped doing it is because I like it. I enjoyed the art and I really do miss it. But at the end of the day, it's like me. Like I'm a trainer full time. I love to train. I don't want to ever be in the spot where it's like I'm debilitated, where my knee is fucked. I couldn't run. I couldn't jump. I couldn't kettlebell swing. I was miserable for three months because I was in crutches. That was the first time in my life where I was really debilitating. I felt like shit. I, I didn't, I felt terrible because I couldn't, I literally could not walk straight. I had to be on crutches and I had, I was in a brace. So what was the, what was the actual final, I guess, diagnosis of, of the injury itself and what it did require surgery or was it just nah. resting time? It was a uh, resting time. It was a sprained MCL. It was almost a grade two, but it was a grade one. So thankfully- Tear. Yeah. Okay. So thankfully it wasn't, uh, it wasn't too, too bad where I needed surgery. But then I started thinking, I'm like, if I really did need surgery, I would be out of training for six months to a year. And then what? I'm going to go back. And then, you know, me, it's like I get anxious. So I'm going to be very worried about my knee. If like if I'm in the same position, is the same thing going to happen? Like if I'm wrestling or if I'm squatting, I'm barbell squatting, is my knee really going to be able to take that kind of pressure again? So me at that point, I'm thank God, thank fucking God that my knee is fine now where I could do anything. I could do squats, I could kettlebell swing. So me, it's just like the longevity of my body and everything else. A lot of guys in jiu-jitsu, they don't understand that. Especially like if guys do strength and conditioning for jiu-jitsu, they kind of have a basis as to where they won't get injured because their body's ready for it. But a lot of guys, especially guys that are, you know, not from America, they're from uh, Brazil. That's all they do. That's all they live. They don't give a shit. Those guys, I always tend to stay away from. A lot of guys in there, they have egos in jiu-jitsu. But me, it's like at that point, it's like you could roll with a black belt and they'll be, you won't get injured ever. They know what they're doing, but it's like if you roll with a blue, purple belt that just wants to compete, get after it, odds are you're going to get injured. And, or the black belt, and the black belt knows how to fuck you up quick, but they're not going to. They're going to make you work for a submission against mm -hmm. them or they're going to make you work for that positioning, that top positioning. So even mm -hmm. though they could easily just tap you out in like two seconds, they are going to make you work for it. And yeah. like you said, they know what they're doing, yeah. which is be so beneficial to both parties. Mm -hmm. I've seen those videos online, man. They're tough. They're tough to watch. I've seen the videos of the dudes grappling or doing something. And you'll see a dude just like throw some type of a cheap shot move where yeah. he pop a knee, pop an elbow and the yeah. dudes freak out. They're like, yo, you really trying to fucking injure me right now? Like, yeah. they ever see, I don't know if you ever saw the dude. I, it's an old video, but he's wrestling with this heavy set guy. They're 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 grappling. He's re going back and forth, but they're not on the ground yet. So they're kind of in a clinch up top. And all of a sudden, he like lifts up on his yeah. elbow like that, and the dude flipped on him. He's mm -hmm. like, "Yo, that's a that's a real dirt bag move." Yeah. So obviously, that happens in every sport. Mm -hmm. There there are dudes like that across every type of sport. There are baseball players that are assholes. I used to when I played baseball, man. I used to get the guys that. I was, a pretty, I was a pretty good hitter. I was a catcher. So I was, I was a really good hitter when I'd come up to base. I, was, I, I usually bat cleanup. Like I would, I would get a, at least a couple RBIs. I would always hit them. I never hit a home run when I was younger. I was always like hit, hit the top of the fence and rolled back in. I was always so pissed. Um, but we'd have the guys on the other teams. You got to be quicker than that. Yo. You got to be, be quicker. So mad, dude. I was like, I'm telling you, it was multiple times. And I would never hit it to the easy part of the field. It would always be to the dead center fucking... The highest part of the fence, and it would tap the top and then mm -hmm. roll back in. But I used to have the guys in the team throw the bats at me after they would get a hit, and they would intentionally fling the bats at you, They're trying to fuck you up, yeah. man. They're trying to get you like in the knees and then in the arms so you can't hit as good. Yeah, it, there's scumbags in every sport, so I definitely understand leaving. It's a challenge when you're leaving that longevity mm -hmm. and your health in the hands of someone else that yeah. 
isn't like me and you. Like, we would never do that to each other. Yeah. But a rando that has too much pride in the game, that's like, oh, I'm not going to let this fucking guy, Tom, I see him on Instagram throwing shit around, doing big things. I'm not going to let him, even if it's just a little amateur thing, I'm not going to let him beat me yeah. in this grapple. It, it's fuck, man. It's ego, man. And it's like, even then, when I was 18 years old, when I was doing karate and Muay Thai, one guy I was sparring with him, he, we were wearing mouth guards at the time, and he straight up popped me in my fucking mouth, and I almost lost two teeth. These teeth right here? At that point, I just got my braces off the year before. <laughs> and people, when they see fighting, they really don't understand what goes into it. I can say this because I've been, I did martial arts for 13 fucking years since I was 10 years old till, you know, whatever. I was 23, 24, whatever. I stopped jujitsu, but it's hard. It's brutal. And when you get injured, it's tough. My teeth cost me 20 grand. My yep. knee, God forbid that knee to surgery. God knows how much that would have cost, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's like... I'm on that budget health insurance, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're telling me, dude. You're telling me. For real. And that shit adds up. Like, people don't understand that. It's like, listen, I get it. Like, you want to work out hard. You want to train hard with your guys. And like, listen, I'm not knocking jujitsu. I still love it. I still watch videos on flow grappling. I watch my co uh, my ex uh, my coach, uh, White Sakizada. Shout, uh, shout out to him. He's the head coach of Sucker Free Jiu-Jitsu. I was with him for five years. He instilled that dog work mentality into me that I bring into my training now. So even then, like when I he was my coach, he would push me, push the shit out of me and I would just get after it and have fun and just do the best that I can. So shout out to him. Um, But I'm not knocking jujitsu, but it's like at the end of the day, no matter what you do, like you said, no matter what sport it is, you got to have good training partners. You got to work with smart people. You got to work with people that don't have egos that are not idiots that are going to get you hurt or you're going to be in, even in the weight room. If you're going to be in the weight room and your boy's like, nah, you could pull five fucking plates on deadlift. You didn't. You weren't able to do three, but you could do five. It's like stupid shit like that. It's like you got to be careful. So you got to have a good team, a good professor, good teacher. They're gonna teach you good stuff that's gonna work and not get you injured. But also when you go out, you compete in tournament. You have to make sure you're hydrated. You made weight. You have to make sure that you're doing it right. You're doing it smart. You warm up properly. You're not fatigued. Are you eating? The day before, or after, are you sleeping? Stuff like that. So jujitsu is the best martial art to do because. You are put in real life situations where it's like, if say you, Nick, are on top of me and you pass both my legs and you have mouth, it's like, holy shit, like this guy could punch me in the face. I could do work. This guy could kill me right now, literally just by beating the shit out of me. You got to cover up. You got to bump. You got to hit thrust. You got to get yourself out of that situation because, and a lot of people need that. They need that to where in that situation or in that life, like, oh, wow, like, I'm still human, but this guy could really do damage to me. I got to adapt and I got to acclimate. So jujitsu itself is a great art. I love it. I love doing it. And eventually I do want to get back into it. But like I said, it's just you have to be smart with who you're with and what gym you're at. Because I'll, go, I'll go with you, man. We, we'll, we'll roll. Let's do it. I'm with it. I'll do it. We'll be respectful to each other. I'm a fucking newbie. <laughs> I went with this dude. I don't know if you know Gareth Hornell. You ever heard of Gareth? Big he, lumberjack, black belt. He is a black belt. Yeah. He works he, at, uh, uh, I think he worked at Bev's gym. He does... He does a lot of, I'll show you a picture. He does a lot of- I think uh, he does security. Security now, yep, yes. I love Gareth, yep. Gareth is the Gareth. homie. Mm -hmm. Gareth is the homie. Um, Gareth I is rolled, gentle giant. I rolled with him. And let me tell you, he's like, yo, Nick, I wanted to bring you to Soka. We'll do some Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu together, this and that. <laughs> Bro, let me tell you, man, <laughs> we rolled for uh, 0.3 seconds. He yep. He's like, all right, I want you with all your best of your ability. He's like, I'm not going to hurt you. Like, I just want to know, like, just show you. He's like- what it can, what you can actually accomplish yeah. and this and that he goes I'm gonna just try to try to keep me pinned down so I'm like this I literally just I have his gi and I have my elbow down on him and I, and he's on he's on his back and I just look at him and I went all right man I don't think this is gonna work out but let's do it <laughs> he goes go bro I Boom, held him for it. four seconds Done, if that it. and he flipped me over uh -huh. and I was like wow I'm just at your mercy right now this is crazy. That's the power of it, man. And it's 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 a different kind of feeling when you have that control over a person. So when you train specifically in that sport in jiu-jitsu, you know what to do with the wrist. You know what to do with the neck, with the knees. Sometimes you put an inside or outside heel hook. You could destroy somebody's leg. You could fuck up their back that with Gareth. a twister. Yep, I love yeah, Gareth. Yeah. He's I love shit, Gareth. man. Yeah, man. I haven't seen him in years, but I love Gareth. Shout out to him. He's he's cool. Dude, but yeah, what man. a fucking animal. It's crazy, man. MMA is MMA fighting is really good. I like jujitsu because it wasn't like a lot of the punching. So that shit is wear and tear on your head. You get concussions, your brain, your fucking teeth. And at that point, I stopped doing fighting. Um Sparring and shit because it's just it wasn't worth it. I'm not professionally fighting. I'm not teaching. So it's like it's just a hobby at that point, you know? 
And me, now that I do personal training full time and the shit that I do, it's like, like I said, it's the longevity. It's like, I got to be smart. And that's not I'm saying that I'm getting older. I'm fucking 26 years old. But at the end of the day, it's like you can get injured at any time. Years compound, man. Exactly. So you got to be careful. People got to be careful with that stuff. And now what's, now what's cool is, uh, I mean, we just kind of cut it on. That's how I do every time. Everybody that listens all the time, they, they, they get it by now. Um, but uh, this is Tom. Tom is my man. Which we're at, what fifteen minutes in? Yeah, and, about about fifteen right, minutes. Here's in. Here's the introduction. Here's the introduction. Tom is my man. We um, what's crazy about our relationship was once I got linked up with Rain, and I'm doing videos for them on the regular now. Uh, which shouts to Rain as usual again. I appreciate them. They're a great company, not just because I work with them, but I used to slug back before I, when I did my caffeine detox for over almost a year and six months. Jesus. Before yeah, dude. But this is my first. Last month was the first time I had caffeine in a year and six months. Wow. So before that, I was drinking like two or three of these a day. So it's I always love the company, and it's just mm-hmm. stuff like this is awesome to be able to get linked up. But I got to shoot Action Bronson a while back, and she, while I was shooting Bronson, I had a couple people DM me, you. Mm-hmm. And they said, yo, my boy Tom trains with Bronson. You might film him at some point. I'm like, oh, shit, okay. And I'm looking, and I'm like, that's fucking sick. You know, we, and we never got to cross paths like that. So then... Cello from No Good Burger, he gave us the real intro and mm-hmm. put us in a group yeah. chat. And he's like, yo, you two should do something, this mm-hmm. and that. And literally right when that happened, the rain contract hit. And I said, we got to get some shit in. We got to yeah. get some videos in. We got to promote you a little bit, promote rain with the intense shit that you do. Mm-hmm. And because it goes hand in hand, you need that. You need a little bit of fuel to get those workouts in. And, and it just kind of works. So. That's how we've now become mm-hmm. friends. Yeah. I've brought all my dumbasses to you and <laughs> <laughs> the circle of morons. Tyler, yes. Gabe, yep. <laughs> so it's and, and it's it's bloomed into a really good relationship yeah. professionally and socially. So this is my man Tom. I wanted Tom to come on because Tom does a lot of different training than what you regularly see. Now I think training like this with kettlebells, Bulgarian bags, maces, you know, the nines, I think that it has become more has increased in popularity, I should say over the last couple of years, especially due to COVID, Mm -hmm. because that was equipment that could give you a full body burn or specifically certain muscle groups and areas. But you worked harder than if you were doing that linear movement like bodybuilding and you're burning more calories and you're sweating and your whole body is getting the work as opposed to just my pec or my bicep or my tricep. And then you got to go do 90 other things, you know, a lot of my workouts, I've done some stuff like this on my own, but when I came to actually train with you, it's a different animal. When I got you barking at me to do heavier everything, and you're just like, okay, yeah, yeah, I got it, I got it. Um, but when I did stuff like this, it's a different feeling during and post. Like when I'm at home and I'm laying down in bed after one of our late night workouts, I'm like, damn, man. I feel it. Like I just out probably. I just feel. Yeah, it takes me a little while because I'm still amped up. Mm -hmm. Last night was last night's session had me contemplating life on the ride home. (laughs) I was hanging. I was hanging my head out the window of the car like this while I was driving. Fucking just like, oh my god, why do I do this to myself? Yeah, like that. Yeah. (laughs) But you need to feel that literal dog work. It it makes you feel. I don't even know the word for it. It just makes you feel. Because you have you have amazing females that train like this, so I can't even say it makes you feel like a man. It just makes you feel like a warrior. That's what I should yeah, say. Man. Makes you feel like a fucking warrior yeah. when you when you're trained with heavy kettlebells and you're training mm-hmm. all these different styles. Mm-hmm. And kind of the the the, the root and the point that I was getting to was there's so many different ways to get your fitness goals in and to train where it doesn't have to be boring. So months ago when I started my TikTok. And I started posting the clips of Jamal and I, and then the clips from all the podcasts, from all my guests. I had a guy that commented, and I responded directly to him. It was my first response directly. And I said, and basically his, his statement was, how do I force myself to go to the gym because I hate it? And basically my response was, you got to find something that you love doing. You got to find something that you enjoy enough to go. You don't have to go and just lift weights and be bored. You don't have to go and just walk on the, on the treadmill and, and the hamster wheel and sit there and just constantly do the same yeah. shit over and over again. You can do fun things. I said, you can maybe pick up golf, pick up tennis, pick up handball, pick up racquetball, do something. And then maybe you go to the gym to specifically train muscle groups and areas that are going to benefit that sport that you've now picked up because you love it. Your training and that type of style is, is the same way in my mind. It doesn't feel like a workout. It feels like a workout. <laughs> it's wording. It's the wording. 
it feels like a workout, but, but it doesn't. At the but same it doesn't because the yeah. hour goes by like that. And yeah. when you're throwing the bag around and you're yeah. doing farmers walks and carries with the weighted with the kettlebells or a weighted Bulgarian bag on your back, stuff like that. It just feels warrior esque, yeah. and that's what I love about it. So yeah. I'm done ranting. <laughs> I'm done ranting. I'll let you talk about it. <laughs> so the how I got into all that was literally during COVID because I had two bartending jobs and I was in EMT school. COVID happened. Shit hit the fan, like I was saying before. And then at that point, I lost both my jobs and my EMT school. That was a fucking shit show because everything was online. We didn't know what the fuck was happening because COVID was prevalent. We didn't know. We had no idea. We didn't know if it was you get it, you die, you do this, how we are in the field with patients and stuff like that. Like, So we didn't know what was going on. So at that point, me, I'm like, all right, well, I don't have a job. I don't know what's happening with my school. I'm going to work out twice a day. I was still working out, but it's like, all right, whatever. I got to adapt. You've always been an athlete. Always. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've always been working out. There's never a time in my life where I was inconsistent with training. It's like, I know a lot of people, like, they'll say they take like a couple months off. They take a year. It's like me. It's like, no. Ever oh, since do a year. Ever since I was 10 years old, that mindset just instilled me, like, from, like, early. And I thank my father for that because my dad wanted me to put me into something that was going to keep me disciplined. And that just... The foundation it built the foundation for my life and training where it's like, all right, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, no matter what, no matter how old I am, and stuff like that. So at that point, I had to adapt. I started buying kettlebells off on it, kettlebell kings, the clubs. I was watching workouts all over. And then it started to turn into something good because people started hitting me up, like, yo, like I've never seen those kind of workouts. I've never done stuff like that. And I'm like, me, like, listen, like just come to my backyard. It was the summertime. It was hot as fuck out. Come in my backyard and let me train you, see how it is and go from there. And then it started to build up into where I was able to run my business and I was starting to get clientele because I've noticed that a lot of guys do this nowadays, but it's like not a lot of people I think on Long Island that they offer this kind of stuff where it's like the heavy bells, the Bulgarian bags and stuff like that. And like you said before, in the gyms, pushing weight, it's just, it was easy to me. It's like, yeah, I can't bench fucking four, four plates, but at the end of the day, it's like, all right, I've been doing this. It's, you know, I have good results. Like, I look good, but it's like, I need more. I need something that's going to get me going. Like you said before, you need to find something that is going to keep you motivated, but also something that you enjoy. Gotta like, love it, man. Yeah. You gotta love it. I've loved the gym for years, and I want you to continue. I, I've yeah. loved the gym for years. Yeah. And for the long time, when I was in my prep mode, and I was getting ready for my shows and shit like that, I was so fucking rigid and strict in what I did. I went there, I did, I did my workout, and I did my cardio right after. Every goddamn day, man. And I did it for years. And I, I, stayed, I stayed on point when I was away at college. I didn't party. I didn't do drugs. I rarely went out to drink. I stayed the course. And I used to talk myself into it. Oh, yeah, I could see myself eating six meals a day and four of them fish and this and that. Like, oh, just to stay in shape. And, 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 and eventually, my, my, my mentality went from that uber strict bodybuilding lifestyle to meeting my coach, who I call the mad scientist, who is a fucking genius, to meeting him, to him prepping me with macros. And we wound up dropping out of the two shows that we were going to do because I just didn't feel, I didn't want to do it. And unlike other coaches where they'd be like, no, 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 you're going to do the fucking show. And then, or, or no, 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 you look great lying to their client just to get them to get another month of payment on there. He's like, yo, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. It's okay, man. It, it's not a big deal. No one's sitting here going, Nick's not going to do the show. Oh my God, what? So after that, and then realizing, oh shit, I do have a choice to then training on my own and doing my own thing and mixing it up a little bit and playing handball for cardio and doing this and that to now I'm at the point where I still love bodybuilding and I still love those workouts, but they're not fulfilling for me anymore. It's the same shit over and over again. Even though John Meadows mountain dog programs are unbelievable. They are way harder than any other bodybuilding program I've ever been put through. Like you feel after you feel with a 16 week program with him, I feel like how I feel after a workout with you. Like you're just drained. You're just like, I'm, I'm shot. Like I'm done. I need to just lay down and put my head under a rock. Um, so I'll always train mountain dog style, but I've been incorporating your stuff. Thankfully, like you, you're, you've been more than accommodating and getting me in one, two times a week, which has been an um, unbelievable experience. Of course. Um, Jamal, I've been boxing with Jamal and like, those on top of me then going to the gym and going, what do I feel like training? And then I'll look at a mountain dog workout and I'll just get a regular lift in. Yeah. But I don't have to slave away at the cardio. I don't have to slave away at, oh, well, it's Monday again. I guess we're going to hit chest. It's like, nah, you could do whatever the fuck you want. Yeah. And your your level of fitness or your style of fitness can continually evolve just like it has yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's like, 
the style, there's so many, the human body is the same as everything else. No matter what, if you put it under stress, it's going to adapt. That's the whole thing with working out, bodybuilding, steel clubs, jujitsu. Your body has to adapt to the stress. So what happens when you work out? You tear the fucking muscle fiber apart. You're not growing them. People say, oh, to grow your arms. You're not, you're not fucking growing them in the gym. No, you're tearing that shit apart. You're tearing it apart. And then that shit regrows when you sleep. When you eat, when you recover. So you're not growing in the gym. You're just beating yourself down to where your body's like, all right, so we curl 20-pound dumbbells. That shit sucked. <laughs> I'm sore afterwards. This is terrible. But then you know what? We're going to adapt, and then we're going to do 30, and then we're going to do 40. And then if you start to go into, like, fucking Phil Heath, Ronnie Coleman shit, then you start doing 60, 70, yeah. 80, whatever, et cetera, so on and so forth, right? So the human body has to adapt no matter what. But your body is still going to form into a Spartan or into that warrior-like status. Whether you're doing bodybuilding, you're doing kettlebells, you're doing clubs, whatever it is. So the amount of stress that you put on the body, it's going to adapt at that point. So with me, with my training, as I started to dive more into it and I started to look on Instagram, following guys that did all the other stuff, like the Bulgarian bags, like Bronson, him, he was doing the Bulgarian bags. My, pa my friend uh, Pat from upstate, Pat Damien, he does a lot of the clubs and the kettlebells and the Bulgarian bags too. It was just a better workout for me personally because one, it was hard as shit. Me, I, when I work out, I just want to lock in. I get into that mentality where I don't think about anything else. I don't think about work. I don't think about relationships. I don't think about women. I don't think about anything. I am just in that moment, in that hour or two, and I'm locked the fuck in. It's like, all right, I got to finish my set of swings. I got to finish my set of squats, all this stuff. So at the end of the day, I'm locking in, and I got to do what I got to do, and that's it. And it helps me with my mentality, with my anxiety, where it's like, all right, I'm working hard. I'm getting after it. This is what I love to do. I'm in a different mindset. My endorphins are going. My adrenaline is going. And this is good for me. This is what I like. So now at that point, like what we, what we were talking about, you have to find something that is good for you in that state, whether you're an obese person and you've never worked out before, whether you're a college athlete and you just, you don't want to be a D1 athlete anymore. You don't want to fucking play lacrosse. You don't want to do bodybuilding workouts. You could have people who have been doing this shit for years. You could have the best Olympic weightlifter in the country, on the planet, in the Olympics. You could have the best jujitsu guy on the planet. And like you said, one day they could wake up like, listen, you know what? I don't want to do this shit anymore. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. That's perfectly don't fine. Don't think that you have to keep doing things that you don't want to do. Life is too fucking short to continually do shit or be with people like that don't suit you. Mm -hmm. It just is what it is. Like you have to just, that's almost that poke that you need to evolve and just do yeah. something else. Yeah. Like, oh, great. You've, you've, you've reached the pinnacle of what you're doing. Like you said, you, you, you know, you can't do four plates, whatever they like that, bro. I hit, I hit great numbers when I was younger, when, you know, younger, when I, when I was like mid twenties, I was deadlifting 500 pounds. I was squatting 315. I was benching 315 and I was shoulder pressing the one forties and one fifty pound dumbbells. Like I was a fucking, and I was only 190 pounds. Like I was a tank. Yeah. That's the biggest numbers I've ever done in my life. Am I still able to hit some, those numbers? Some of them, maybe, but I don't try but for it you anymore. Don't care. I don't it, give a it, fuck. I don't cares. care. It doesn't it's like, matter. It's like, what is, uh, I don't need to have the dick stroking contest with everybody else in the gym. Yeah, it's true. Though, I got yeah. my, you know, one of my buddies, really good dude. <laughs> He's really good dude. He is, he is. He just, he, he does dumb shit sometimes and he says dumb great things. guy i love him does some stupid shit but he's he a great does guy. some really dumb shit and it's just and in terms of like judging and fitness that's really what he does so um he's the kind of guy that like oh what's your max what's your max it's like who gives a fuck man yeah. no one cares bro it's like it's not a big deal man just because you can bench 405 or 500 and i bench 315 doesn't mean anything it literally doesn't mean anything because I can guarantee that the stuff that I do with you over there, where we're throwing a 200 pound bag over our shoulder, he more than likely can't do because it's a different style of training. And it's the same, it's, it's that same mentality. So <laughs> he actually was on the phone with him yesterday, the other day and he just said something to me. And I was like, I was like, that's like the dumbest thing you fucking ever. <laughs> he's like, he's like, um, I was talking to one of my, um, one of my wife's friends and, uh, I told her that primarily kettlebells are done by females. It's like a female workout. That's cute. And I'm like, nah, that's not true, man. That's cute. Yeah, I'm like, that's not true. And he's you like, show him me, I, dude. Did he, you show him me. He fucking sees. He sees on the story. <laughs> so it's like, 
it's like, what what is that mental stigma that that you think just because you're a power lifter and just because you do what you do that oh go pick up that two hundred pound kettlebell, go pick up that one fifty pound kettlebell, swing that for me, let me know how that goes for you, because you're gonna be all over the place. Yeah. You're not gonna be able to control that shit. Your feet are gonna be fucking stumbling over. You're gonna be like this, like you're fucking just like throwing a cannonball. It's like oh shit. Yeah. A lot of people they're not coachable, man. You have to be coachable or you have to be open to different things mma and jiu-jitsu that instilled that mindset into me too it's like no matter who it is like i'll still go to workout classes like shout out to colin and the wolf pack uh wolf pack fitness in brooklyn they're the guy that do the kettlebell flips and stuff like that my guys from hit house we went over there and we took that class colin led the workout so with me I have no ego. I don't care. Listen, you're running a class. I like it. I'm going to listen to what you have to say. Fuck yeah. If I do something wrong, tell me. If I, if I fucked up a set or whatever, let me know. And then I'll, I'll learn from it. That's how you have to learn. You have to be coachable. Same thing with Landmine University. Shout out to Alex Canellis who runs that. When I took his certification in September, I had that coachable, that student mindset where it's like, all right, I've, I've practiced this shit a little bit, but now it's like, all right, I'm working with the guy who who has created this system. So I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to do certain things. I have a partner with me. I'm not going to be in competition with him. I don't give a shit. At the end of the day, I'm still learning myself. But a lot of guys, a lot of people, they're very stuck in their ways. And I'm not saying that, listen, is my training the best and all? No, because there's so many other things that you could do. Play sports, do bodybuilding, do what, go swim. You can Power do lift, do, Power do lift. it, enjoy. You can do whatever the fuck you want. But it's funny though that guys like that say, oh, kettlebells are for females. It's like, no, it's really not. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> exactly. It's like, listen, doing kettlebell snatches with 40 kilograms and 88 pound bell, you rep that shit out a hundred reps. That thing is going to get you fucking diesel strong because it's grip, it's intensity. You're using your hips. You're coming up here. You're extending and punching up. My lat is engaged. My core, my shoulders, the stability. You're coming back down here. <sighs> that intense flow and that intense kind of punching style like that it's explosive, but you're weightlifting, you're doing cardio at the same time. It kills two birds with one stone. So like you said before, if you're doing powerlifting shit, bodybuilding stuff, it's like, all right, I got to do fucking an hour and a half of chest, but then I got to go on the stairs for, for an hour, and then I got to sit in the sauna. But with this, I like this because it kills two birds with one stone. And guys like that, all I say to them is like, listen, just come try it out. Come try it. Come try it out. That's it. And see how you like it. It is what it is. If you don't like it. I don't care. I'll even, but, pay, I'll even pay for his first class. Yeah. Come on. At, go on down. At the end of the day, <laughs> Let it's me like, know how it works out. Don't knock it until you try it. That's with everything in life. If you have not done something, whether it's in fitness, business, a book, whatever, don't knock it until you try it because look what happened with me. I switched up my training style and it turned into my business. It turned to something where it's like, I don't need to work a regular job. I don't need to go back to school. This is it. This is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. It's my passion. It's what I love to do. And I found my niche in the fitness community or the, you know, the working out community because everybody does the same shit. Everybody. But at that point, you could do the same shit, but you need to find a niche. And the fitness community, it, they, people say it's saturated, but it's really not. Because you have a lot of guys with different styles. You have guys that just train women. You have girls that just train women. You have guys that train guys with athletics, with sports. Me, for example, I'll train anybody. I train guys. I train girls. But the way I do it is, is more of an athletic standpoint is to where they lose weight, but they build muscle at the same time. And my niche is what I do. The kettlebells, the bags, all that shit. So at that point, don't knock it till you try because you never know what could turn into it. It could turn into a business. It could turn into a lifestyle change. You're doing drugs. You're drinking alcohol. You're doing stupid shit. There are bodybuilders and powerlifters who are fucked up in the head where they're doing drugs. They're fucking drinking Constantly. alcohol. Constantly. They're fucked up in the head. So you see some of these guys. I'm not talking really talking about like the famous guys like on the Mr. Olympia, but I'm talking about guys like regular just standalone guys. I've known so many guys who have done steroids, who have done drugs, who were, the, who were athletic as shit, but they were overtrained. They weren't happy with themselves. They were depressed. So at some point, you're going to hammer yourself down so much, so much, so much, where it's like, all right, I need to switch it up or I'm going down a dark path. A lot of people don't understand that. You could be obese and unhappy with your life. That's one thing. But then again, if you're doing something that's bettering yourself, but even that, it turns into a toxic thing to where you're still fucking depressed, but you look like a Greek god, that's not good. That's mm -hmm. not good at all. You have to take yourself back. All right, all right, listen. What I'm doing now, you have to look at yourself in the mirror. What I'm doing now is not right. Yeah, I'm good. I'm strong. I got, you know, I'm eating clean. But at some point, I'm still unhealthy. I'm still doing drugs. I'm still drinking a fuckload of alcohol on the weekend. Your mental state is fucked up. Because you look at yourself in the mirror, 
you could have chiseled abs, you could have big arms, but you're like, I don't like how I look. This is bad. I need I need to do more. I need to do more cardio. I need to lift more weights. I need to eat cleaner. But then one day you may never know. You might pass out just because you're so fucking exhausted from doing all this shit. So more of the story is whether you're obese, whether you're a professional athlete, whatever it could be, do not knock something until you try it because it could be better for what you're doing now. Or if you don't like it, that's fine. You go do something else or you keep doing what's working for you. There's two ways it could go. And either way is fine. Just don't knock it until you try it. And whoever said that kettlebells are for girls, still, I, I would have him look at the girls that just use kettlebells. Yeah. They're fucking beasts. They're probably outworking. In your, in, your, in your class, they were doing almost the same weight as me. Yeah. I was like, oh, God. Ooh, oh, I might have to up this weight a little bit. Nah, man. My, the girls that I train, man, they're awesome. I, I love them. They're, they get after it. They work hard. And with them, I, I even some of the older women you have in the class. Yeah, I instilled in beast them mode. I instilled in them where it's like, listen, get rid of this. Walk away from the stigma there. It's like, oh, women, if you lift weights, you're gonna look like a man. No, you're gonna look like a man to the regular eye of society because everybody is fucking complacent and they're very sedentary. They don't work out. They're sitting at desks nine to five. They're miserable with their lives. And then when they see a girl, oh, you're working out. You're getting too bulky. No, you're not. You look good. That's it's called, it's called muscle mass. Yeah. It's, it's healthy. Yeah, it's healthy. You're lean, you're toned, you're athletic, you got cardio, you look fucking great. And guys like us, where we are in that lifestyle, we look at women and we're like, oh, she looks great. She's got- Good for you. Yeah. Getting after that shit. She's got muscles. She looks good. She's doing jump rope. She's doing kettlebell swings. Like She looks great. That's, that's awesome. But a lot of girls, they'll let that get to them. And I tell all my girl clients and all of them, shout out to all of them. I love them. They're awesome. They get after, but I say to them, like, listen- at the end of the day, you can't let what regular people look at you say and what they say bother the shit out of you. Because in the eyes of us, or in the eyes of people who understand the lifestyle, you're going to look amazing. You're going to look incredible. But at the same time, it's like, listen, if you don't want the muscles, that's fine. You can still do cardio workouts. That's cool. But don't let somebody who doesn't live this lifestyle tell you what you should look like. Everyone, there's always going to be someone with an opinion. I tell everybody this. Mm-hmm. Always somebody, whether it's a positive opinion or a negative opinion, someone's mm-hmm. always going to think like, Oh, Tom shouldn't do the kettlebells because they do this. He should he just stick to the maces. And then somebody that ah no 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 the maces are bad. You should just stick to the kettlebells. Like there's always gonna be someone that has to the fucking opinion. Yeah, oh you're my god, pop your yeah. shoulder. Oh, you're doing kettlebell swings. Your back's gonna hurt. It's it, exactly. It's like shut the fuck up. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I, I, I when I, I, I the funny thing is, and I and I explained this to Tyler, and I explained this to Gabe as well. Um, when I I have an L five S one herniations. And they, they were pretty bad when I was younger. I got in a car accident and I got fucked up pretty bad. And then for, uh, I want to say like a year or two after that, I took it easy at the gym. I took it easy and I wasn't training as hard and I just, I was kind of complacent in what I was doing. I made excuses because my back and this and that. Now it used to radiate. I used to get radiating pain down my sciatics. Both my sciatic nerve, my sciatic nerves, ugh, couldn't fucking say that. My sciatic nerves both would just push down to my heels. There were, there were a lot of mornings where I couldn't even put my socks on. Um, and then I met the mad scientist, and he was big on compound movements and big lifts and this and that. And, I st- and he told me, he's like, you need to start deadlifting. He's like, you have to deadlift. You have to get those numbers up. You got to start doing sumo so this way you work your lower back and your glutes and get those stronger. Yeah. Because you, in turn, you won't have as much back pain from that. Yeah. And I, I was like, really? And he goes, yes. Yeah. Trust me. And I go, Okay. Bro, I started doing deadlifts like two, three times a week. I was a fucking monster. Yeah. That's when I was lifting 500, back pain gone. Yeah. Since then, listen, don't get me wrong. I pop it sometimes and it's tight sometimes. I would say I have about 90 to 95% good days that where I don't have any back pain because I built my glutes and my lower back up. Mm-hmm. And there's still work to be done. I could build them up even more where that goes to 100% all the time. But- it's just you gotta you gotta be willing to put the fucking work in. Yeah. You gotta get out of your own head with things. You gotta like learn that there's other there's a million and one ways to do something. You know, a doctor may recommend surgery. This person may recommend PT. This we may recommend training a specific way to build the muscle the muscle uh, imbalances up and just get stronger, and that will create the relief that you're looking for for something. Mm-hmm. There's a multiple multitude of ways to do it, but like you have to figure it out. What works for you? You know, I love Gabe. I love Gabe to death. Gabe gets in his own head. Yeah. And I tell him this all the time. He gets in his own head for years. Every, every time, every time something is twin, she's like, oh, I got to go to Dr. Camp. I got to go. And I love Michael Camp. I've had Dr. Camp on the podcast. He's unbelievable. He's amazing at what he does. But I think even he at this point was just like, 
you know, yeah, you might you might be fucked up, but you have to be able to like get out of your own head and think just because I'm doing this, it's going to it's going to I'm going to get hurt. Like when I was lifting 500, I would have to get out of that thought process of if I do this, I'm going to fuck my back up because then you're going to fuck your back yeah. up. You have to just do it yeah. and just keep to the form and the strictness that you know that you have to do. Keep it all tight. Engage the core. Breathe out. Tight up coming up. Pop, you know, pull the shoulders a little bit back right when you hit the lockout and then drop it. Don't go down slow. Yeah. Doing these and the way that you know to do it, it keeps you injury pre injury preventative. Mm -hmm. Preventative? Preventative. Prevent prevent Prevention. Keeps the injury uh, from occurring. There we go. Let's just say that. Keeps the injury from occurring. I yes. like that. Yes, <laughs> correct. Yes. Yes. I'm just going to nod my head. Say yeah, yes. sure. Because now I'm going to think about it. I'm going to, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to okay, say yeah, that. So go with that. Yes. I don't want to say something get roasted on yes. the internet. <laughs> um, so I'll just, I'll just backtrack and do it for the internet. Um, so, you know, that keeps you out of the doctor's offices. Yeah. But you have to know that there's a limit to push, like you were telling him last night. You push that limit. Like you don't have to go to the heaviest weight. Yeah. You don't have to go what Nick's doing. You don't have to you, but you should bump it up because you're doing the baby weight. Yeah. And you have to give yourself a challenge to get stronger. Mm -hmm. yeah. So even to build yourself up towards that bigger weight. And with me, with everybody and, that I train. And it probably helps mentally. That's a big too. Yes. Whoever I train, I always tell them, like, listen. I'm not going to force you to go up and wait because a lot of people that look at my Instagram, oh, Tom, you're so fucking scary. You're listening to heavy metal. You're listening to dubstep. He trained too heavy. He trained too hard. Listen, I'm not going to tell you to clean and squat a fucking 176-pound kettlebell and do it for squats. I saw that today. Look good, right? <laughs> I tried. I tried. That shit hurt. That shit that I know it terrible. did. That I know shit it is did. crazy. But it's like, I'm not going to tell you to do that. It's like, listen, am I, am I going to push you to do 124? Yeah. Like my client Lenny today. I love Lenny. Awesome. Guy's got heart. Pushes me every day. I said to him, I was like, yo, why are you doing 70 fucking pounds? I know you could do the 100 pounds. Why? Because it's 6.15 in the morning and you're tired? I don't care. Go up. Try it. At least fucking try it. If you fail, you fail. Who cares? But you still tried it. Who gives a shit? So with all my clients, with all the people, I tell them, listen, at the end of the day, yeah, I listen to heavy metal and I go hard on my workouts because that's just me. That's who I am. When you talk to me, I'm a down-to-earth person. When I'm training, I would tell you to fuck off because I don't want to talk. I want to work out. But after that, you can ask me whatever questions you want. I'll help you with your form. It's my job. It's like people look at my Instagram and they're like, oh, are you going to make me do all this shit? No, but I'm going to get you to that point this one day. This is what I do. You do a lesser version until you're ready for yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's not a dick swinging contest. Like the, it, I, I say that all the time to everybody. I say, it's, it's true, not, though. It's no, not a it's dick true. swinging contest. It's not, it's not a pull it out and measure type situation. It's, it's a, yeah. this is what I do. And if this is something that you aspire to do one day, fantastic. Yeah. Do it. But it takes the time and the journey to get there. You're yeah. not going to be doing this shit overnight. It yeah. just, it is what it is. And at the end of the day, if you need help, you hire a trainer. You get somebody to help you. People come to me. Yo, Tom, I want to lose weight. Okay. Yo, Tom, I want to get stronger. Okay. Yo, Tom, I just, I need something to get away from drinking. I, I go out with my boys on the weekends. I drink. I spend money. I don't want to do shit. I, I need something. I said, okay. Find your purpose and what it is that you want to do. And if you need the fucking help, you can't do it by yourself. Some people can't do it by themselves. They really can't. They need the handholding. They need the handholding. Like, yeah. listen, like... Some some of my guys, it's like they're they're on point, they're killing it in the gym, but they just they can't push themselves to the point where it's like if it's with me. If it's with me, my fucking job is to push you and to get you to do heavier weight and to push through your limits. And if you need that help, invest. You yourself are the best investment you could ever possibly have in your life. Your mental health, your physical health, or even going to school or a business. If you invest in yourself, by even buying a trainer, going back to school, starting a business. That is the best project you'll ever have because that's what's going to create the person that you're meant to be. And that's the kind of future that you want. You don't want to be in the same place physically, mentally, financially. No, you want to invest in yourself and you want to become better. That's why I love what I do because at the end of the day, I am helping people because it's like I'm taking people away from bad shit. I'm showing them a different world of working out to where it's like they're able to enjoy it and come back. For me, yeah, listen, is money a factor? Yeah. For everyone. And it everything. is for everybody. It's how I pay my bills. I love making videos. Yeah. Do I love getting paid to make videos? A of thousand course. percent. Yeah. I need, to, I got an apartment now. I got to pay for that fucking exactly. thing. Exactly. <laughs> and it's like, listen, money is a factor. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're paying me for a service. But it's the people that make all these fucking excuses, but they're going out to the bars Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Thursday night. 
it's like hundred, hundred and fifty dollars a yeah. clip. Yeah, they're going to the clubs. They're going to Miami. They're spending uh, money on on plane tickets. They're going to Ultra Music Festival. They're popping bottles. They're buying weed. You are spending so much fucking money, and you are wasting your time around these kind of people that you're with. When you want to get in shape, you want to do that, but then your friends are gonna say, "Oh, why aren't you work? Uh, why aren't you uh, coming out with us on Friday night? Or right, you're going to the gym with your trainer at seven o'clock? Nah, that's stupid. Why are you doing that?" I have lost so many fucking friends by living the lifestyle that I do from high school to what I am now because that mentality that I have, it is not instilled in a lot of people because a lot of people like the easy way out. They like that fucking comfort zone. They want to go out. They want to go out to dinner. They want to go out and drink with their boys. They want to do that shit. Me, when I was younger, I was working out on the weekends after my bartending shifts. And all my guy friends, they'll be like, yo, why don't you come out? I go, because I don't fucking want to. Because it's a waste of time. Stand it's, around. It's same a waste fucking of bar money, rats. Same bar, same shit, same town, same fucking people. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to better myself because, one, I need to lock in. I need to mentally get better because, you know, I've dealt with anxiety and depression before. And working out, that was my escape. That was my thing. A lot of people was, back then, was drinking. The guys that I was around, it was drinking for them. That would make it worse for me. Weed too. A lot of people. Weed they, too makes weed makes me yeah. think too much. And yeah. I'm just like, no, I'm good on this. And a lot of people resort to that bad shit to get away from that depression, that escape from reality. But at the end of the day, what I was doing back then, I lost a fuckload of friends because they just didn't understand it. They didn't get it. And that was fine with me. I didn't care because I'm not doing anything bad to you. You're not doing anything bad to me. It's just I've outgrown it. I just don't want to live that lifestyle. So if you're spending two, three grand on Miami trips or you're going to the bars spending $500, $600 a night, but you're telling me that you can't hire a trainer for, I don't know, say if it's like 10 sessions, they charge, say if it's 10 sessions, they charge you 30 to $50 a clip. Yeah, whatever. Say if you do 10 sessions one-on-one for an hour straight, say if they charge whatever, $700, right? Just throwing that out there. That's for the month. Or that's for, you know, three times a week. That's still for two or three months. All right, you're making an investment. They're teaching you what to do. And then if you really want to do it by yourself, you can. But if you're going to take that investment that you think you're going to make, that you think is going to be a waste of time and money, but you're going to go to the bar and spend that shit in one week, in one weekend, then on Monday you wake up, you're still a piece of shit. (laughs) You're still somebody that just is not motivated. You're just not in that mindset where it's like, I want to get better, but I don't want to get up at six o'clock in the morning. I want to get better, but I don't want to invest in a trainer. I want to eat right, but I don't want to pay for the food. I don't want to go food shopping. I don't want to cook it for myself. And it's that mentality with people that people have where it's like they're never going to be able to lock in and really get into that hard-to-kill mentality that a lot of people fucking need to get into because they've, they want to change their lives, but they care about what other people think, and they just, they're not mentally there to do it. But I will say this, that if you do do it and you must do it, your life and yourself will be so better off. Not because of physically of how you look, but also your life all in general. You'll surround yourself with great people, people that are going to look out for you, people who are going to push you in the gym, people who are going to even have you do biz- different business ventures or even go back to school, stuff like that. Like me and you, we're going hand in hand. You're helping me out. And whatever I can do for you, where you come in, you could do my workouts whenever you want. It goes hand in hand at the end of the day. Marcel, I love the kid. He has brought me clients. He's been helping me a lot with what I've got going on now. And at the end of the day, you can surround yourself with good people as long as you invest in yourself and you really lock in. And like I said before, you may never know what that investment is going to do for you, but just know that it's going to be good, whether it's a year, two, 10 years from now, your breakthrough will come, whether it's physically, mentally, financially, or anything else in life, it will come. And when it does, you're going to thank yourself for doing that shit years ago or for even starting. And you always got to remember why you fucking started doing what you're doing. Fuck yeah. 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 (laughs) Yeah. I got bars, bro. I got bars. I love this shit because I I like talking and I like, I don't really do that a lot with my Instagram. It's really just like, just like working out stuff like that but i love just like talking and like like just like just getting your point across and like what your experience is it just it it helps others because in my opinion from since i've been doing the podcast stuff especially and just talking about my experiences and that's whether being a business owner being a videographer for other videographers being in the fitness industry like being a 20 something now 30 year old male like everybody goes through their own road and journey and everybody has obstacles on these journeys and these roads. And I think although everybody has a different road, we all have similar obstacles. They're just presented differently. 
and they look different and they act different, but because they're similar, hearing you talk about it, hearing me talk about it, hearing my guests talk about it, you know, it sounds corny, but if I can help one person out of the hundreds of listens an episode that I get, that means that we did something and that it the point got across and that maybe somebody hears you speak about this type of stuff yeah. and now they wake up on Monday and they go, yo, that's it. This is the fucking, maybe they start Friday instead of Monday. Like this is the fucking day that I yeah. start and I'm done bullshitting myself. Mm -hmm. So stuff like that's important. Yeah. Um, I did want to ask you about Landmine University. Yes. How'd you get involved with that? Because obviously that's much different than the kettlebell Bulgarian bags and maces. That's kind of taking an approach on a gym piece of a piece of gym equipment or, you know, standard strength piece of equipment yeah. and putting a different type of spin on it. Cause mm. it's very interesting and it's, and it's tough mm. shit. Yeah. So how did, how did I, I think I saw Phil Daru doing it last summer. And then one day, Phil Daru is a strength and conditioning coach for a lot of UFC fighters. Dustin Poirier, I think he trains this one guy, Brutal Boschwick. He's a bare knuckle fighter. I saw him doing it. And when I saw the movements of them coiling in with their elbows and their hips and stuff like that, I didn't really know. Honestly, I didn't even know what to think of it. But I kind of saw the movements, especially when they were doing their split cleans from the bottom. I saw it and I was like, oh shit. Like I, I like that. I, I and I love the landmine. The landmine is dope, but I never knew that you could do so much shit with it. Like a lot of guys, like, what are you gonna do with a landmine? You're gonna do the T bar rows, you're gonna do the presses, you're gonna Bikes do the presses, squats, whatever. Yeah, yeah it, it's not really a lot. You could do a lot with it, but it's not it's just like you could do RDLs, single leg RDLs with a fucking dumbbell. You don't need the landmine. You could do front squats with dumbbells, whatever. So landmine university, like I said before, Alex Canella, shout out to him. Nicest guy ever. Guy's a fucking tank, Hulk, just six foot, whatever, tank of a man, nice guy. I took his certification in September, and he really, he went into depth with the whole system of the what he does. And with the landmines, it mimics Olympic weightlifting, where if you're doing a barbell clean, Olympic weightlifting, the split cleans is where I'm here from the bottom, and I'm coiling in like this. <laughs> I'm leaning to the side here. <laughs> Kenji's running away. He's like, oh, God, he's showing landmine stuff. <laughs> I'm coiled in here like this, but I'm really getting my lat and my oblique to engage here, too. And when I'm coming here like this, I'm moving up, bringing myself in. I'm coiling in like this, and I'm bringing it to the other side. That's an explosive fucking movement. And at that point, your whole body all in one hand is coming here. Boom. Elbow underneath. Clean that shit up. It's the same thing as any other type of clean. It's just elbows in. Barbell cleans, you got to come here, keep your elbows up tight. Kettlebell cleans, you're coming in here, boom, punch it up. The landmines is the same thing. So what his thing was that it mimics Olympic weightlifting, but in a different kind of locomotive form to where your spine is starting to move now. The, mobi like, the mobility is increased. Yes. And a lot of guys, they can't, even, they can't even do that. They can't even bring their elbows to their fucking hips when they have the bar because they're so immobile. They're so tight because their body is so used to that linear form. So Landmine University, it's sick because I teach it to all my clients. I've taught it to you, to Tyler, Gabe, all my girls, uh, Joe and Lenny. And it's a sick workout because you're lifting weights, you're doing cardio at the same time, and you could do it as a superset. That's what I've been doing. I've been doing the Landmine snatches, doing the Bulgarian bags and stuff like that. So at that point, it was another thing to add on to my arsenal to where it's like, oh shit, like, yeah, it's a, it's a Landmine, it's a bar, but I could have six sob motherfuckers in the gym and all we need is the two Landmines. I've had that before where I've had, I've had people, guys, like six, seven, eight monsters, and I would just be like, all right, we're on the landmines, we're on the kettlebells. Two bars, two bells, that's it. And they would be looking at me like, what are we going to do? I was like, just wait. Yeah, this, this, is, this is it? Just wait. I got you covered. Don't worry. We're doing, I'm teaching them split cleans. I'm teaching them the squat and the pound squats, the kettlebell swinging. We're doing burpees. We're doing push-ups. Like, and everybody's dying. You know what I mean? It's like everybody is getting a sick workout in. So... It's just another thing to add to the arsenal, but it's also great for athletes too because the explosiveness and also the mobility of it, it's good, especially for wrestlers, jiu-jitsu fighters, for uh, boxing guys. When you throw a punch, when you throw an uppercut, for example, we're like this, my elbow is tied in. This is the short side of my torso like this. This is the long side. So when you're throwing your uppercut or even throwing your hook, you're here like this, your elbow is coming in, but your lat and your core is engaged. When I'm doing my split jerk with the landmine, it's the same fucking concept. I'm here like this. I'm coiled in here. But then as I do my jerk, I'm exploding up and I'm coming to the other side. 
So at that point, yeah, it was just a great thing to add to my arsenal. It was a lot of fun. A lot of fun to do. Shout out to Alex again. He's a very nice guy. What his system and what he created, unbelievable. And then a lot of guys that I know, they've been doing a lot of classes with him. I've been able to do a workshop. I'm um, teaching people that stuff too. So it's just another thing. Another thing for unconventional and just to show people like, yeah, listen, there's a lot of different kind of stuff you could do to get that workout in. If you want to just do landmines, that's fine. That's cool. It's whatever works for you. We got to get Bronson on that. He wanted to. We got to get Bronson th- on that. He wanted to. He didn't have a barbell, he told me. But I so I told him, like, you can still do it with kettlebells. Like, even with, like, the lunges or the cleans, you can still use that modality to to do that. But he, he's been wanting to do that, yeah. Just bring the bell. Just, just bring the whole barbell okay, in. Yeah, just bring the bar. Might as well just have it go through the, go through the roof. Right? I already fucking put everything in my car anyway. Yeah, exactly. I bring everything in, from, in and out of my fucking charger. That thing's shot. <laughs> it's shot. That was my S5. My S5, I... I was amazed at how much shit I was able to fit in that on the regular. All my video and photo gear. And it was a fucking basically a two seater. Yep. I mean, I had a little small bucket seat back seat. Mm-hmm. But I, during COVID, uh, Tyler and I went out to because I was transforming the garage into a gym. Tyler and I went out to Tractor Supply in. Uh, oh my god, past past Riverhead. I forget where it is. It's, it's past Riverhead, but we were all the way the fuck out there. Drove the S five out there, and we got. I think they're. I want to say they're. Four by six horse stall mats because mm-hmm. the horse stall mats are the best type of flooring to use for that type of shit, bro. I fit like five or six of them in the S five. That's sick, and they're ninety five pounds each. Yeah. And we're sliding them through the trunk right into the back, and we driving the all, the whole way back, and the car's weighted down like yep. a motherfucker because I already lowered it. Yep. Dude, it was great, man. That was my workhorse car. Mm-hmm. And now I got the truck, and now I just beat the shit out of the truck. <laughs> yeah, I need a truck, man. My car now is probably fucking shot. This suspension is probably terrible. And my trunk is my sweatshirts, my hoodies, and like three fucking Bulgarian bags. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, we got to get we gotta get you a truck. My sneaker. No, my, uh, my my speaker. My speaker is in my passenger. My backpack is there. I think I have another box full of clothes. Yeah, my, uh, my car is my headquarters <laughs> right now. My car is where I run my business. That's okay. That's how listen. That's how it starts out, and then once okay. you get yeah. you, you keep leveling up, and you you get more and more gear, and it yeah. forces you to now buy a bigger car. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe buy a truck or a Jeep. Yeah, nah, man. I, I don't mind. I didn't. I didn't mind starting from the bottom. I don't care about that shit. It's a bright. Listen, man. It's a bright future. You got a lot yeah. more in store, and you got a lot more stuff. Yeah, man. Uh, what what other certifications ha- have you done besides the landmine and? So or, I, or do you have your eyes set on something else? No, nah, honestly, I, in my in my opinion, if I'm being totally honest with you, a lot of people are going to disagree with me, but I think certifications are bullshit. I really think they're fucking bullshit. Okay. I think degrees are good, but even then, like people who have the exercise science degrees, they have no fucking idea what they're doing to begin with. Well, I'm talking more on the like the certifications for like Landmine University, like oh, that type of stuff. No, also oh, Landmines. No, he. I think it was just one. His coaches level one, but I think he did a coaches level two. Certification, but for certain guys. But if if that's offered to me, I would 100 percent do it. And I'm, and and are there any other niche, like maybe mace certificate? Like are there any other? There that? are, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So would you, do you have you have your eyes set on any other ones or just no, you, you 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 like winging it and creating your own shit with it? Because honestly, like I said, it's like it's just like certifications are just I don't know. To me, it's like it's a piece of paper. It's gotcha. a piece of paper at the end of the day. Like you could have the NASM cert. But you can still be overweight in the gym training. And a shitty people. trainer. You can still be a shitty trainer. You could be a string bean. You could be obese. You could be not be knowing what the fuck you're doing. But people will still give you a job and to say, oh, you have this piece of paper? All right, cool. It's kind of like the same thing with school. A little bit. There's certain degrees that... Yeah, I, I agree. That don't I really agree. mean shit. Yeah. It's like they don't really mean shit. You could have a piece of paper. You're spending so much money on that degree or that certification, but you still may not know what the fuck. You're doing, yeah, man. Like with maces, if I got a ma- like if I I I don't know what mace certification it is. I think it's on it, or I think it's Steel Mace Nation. But me, when I swing my maces, I'm doing 55 and up. You know what I mean? I'm doing 55 pounds and up. I know what I'm doing. I'm swinging with my core, my spine's moving, my my grip is tight. And a lot of guys, like the guys who are certified, can they do that? Probably not. Can they rep out a 25 pound mace three, four hundred times? Maybe not. You know. But it's like me. It's like I look at my performance and how I teach more so than certifications. If Alex was to offer the the coaches level two certification, like globally, yeah, hundred percent, I would do that. But in general, it's like I feel like there are trainers out there that don't have any certifications, but they're the best coaches in the world. It's like you know, with guys with um, in jiu jitsu or MMA, you know, they may not win any fights, they may not have won any fights back then, but they know how to teach, 
and they created world champions. But then again, you could have guys who have all these fucking certifications. They went to this school. They went. They got their BS in exercise science. They do kin kinesiology, if I said that right. Oh, kinesiology. Yeah, yeah. Kinesiology. Mm -hmm. They could have all that shit, but at the end of the day, it's like you're just giving your clients workouts just to get their heart rate up. You know, you're not really doing anything beneficial to them. <laughs> you're just making them lose their weight. You're making them train. You're making them do everything else, but it's like you're still not. You still don't understand it. You still don't get it. Yeah. So, but yeah, nah. Would I do any other certifications? I'm certified as a trainer. I paid, honestly, I paid $60 online to get a, to get certified. Expertrating.com. Yeah, the funny thing is I'm not certified as a trainer, but I'm probably better than a lot of other trainers because of how many people I've been around and uh -huh. experienced and this and that. You've been around bodybuilders. You've been around professional yeah. athletes for yeah. God knows how long. So you've learned from them. You've seen them work out. You could teach anybody how to do all those kind of workouts yeah. better than any other trainer could do. And life experience, experience like that, that's what matters most. And honestly, it's sometimes with book work. Yeah. Even, even like the pieces of paper. That's how, that's how I am. I got, you know what book I have that I actually, I bought fucking years ago to try to become more injury. Um, fuck, again, I said it the wrong way again. Jesus Christ. I think it's preventative. I'm looking this up. Hold on. Injury. Well, no, because I'm thinking injury prone is like when you're, when you're thinking. But of, you're trying to not get injured. Correct. Okay. Preventative. Is that a word? That is. Yes, I know that's a word. Designed to keep something undesirable, such as illness, harm, or accidents from occurring. So mm. it's in... Wait. That's what I'm saying. It doesn't sound right. It's not injury preventative. It, that would be injury prevention. So you're trying... All right. So here's, here's what I'm going to say. I'm going to say it like I said it before. I, I bought this book to become less injury prone. There you go. Boom. Give me some. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're both going to go nuts thinking about this Oh, my shit. God. It's terrific. I'm going to text you later. I'll be like, I know the fucking word now. <laughs> um... Yeah, I, I bought uh, Supple Leopard. You ever heard of that book? No. I have to show you it. It's Supple Leopard. It's a fucking textbook, basically. And it's all stretching and mobility techniques. Okay. And, and if you're hurting in a specific area, how to prevent that from ever getting injured again. And like, it's a really awesome book. Haven't opened it. Like, I, I, I flipped through <laughs> the pages. Haven't really read it, but I have to. And stuff like that, again, it's investing in yourself and... and 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 trying to just better yourself on another level. So knowledge is a superpower. Damn, that's how we're gonna end it off right there. Knowledge is a superpower. Knowledge I fucking love superpower. that. Mm -hmm. So before we before we finish fully, because uh, we've been going for about an hour, I gotta run. You gotta go train some mm -hmm. people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, how can people get in touch with you? How can you plug yourself and the business? Because yo, if you're listening and you're from Long Island, you gotta take this motherfucker's class. It is crazy. He's a monster. <laughs> So right now, my Instagram is Tom DeJulie. It's T-O-M-D-E-G-I-U-L-I. That's how you spell it, because a lot of people, they've known me for years. They still don't know how to fucking spell my last name. Let me ask you this. Is it D-E and then space? Because sometimes it's like that. I, or or D-E, D, lowercase e, big G. How does it, how you? So it's supposed to be capital D-E, then a space, then a capital G. That's what I thought. But then after my license got fucked up and they still did it wrong, I had to switch everything up because they thought I wasn't me because my name wasn't spelled right. That's good. So yeah, after that, I was just like, all right, it's just one fucking word. Thanks, New York State. There you go. You're yep. fucking awesome. You guys are awesome. Thanks for coming in today. Uh-huh. And the DMV, y'all can go fuck yourselves. <laughs> So anyway, they only hire the most elite caliber people at the DMV. Stop, stop pretending like you don't know this. Already. I got to cancel my whole day when I go to the DMV. <laughs> I can't do it. So my Instagram handle, Tom DeJulie, spell like that. T-O-M-D-E-G-I-U-L-I. -I. My brand right now, my fitness brand is the DeJulie Method. Peep that fucking shirt. That's a, that's a clean shirt, man. The guy who made it for me, he did great. Because I, I beat the shit out of these shirts. My crew necks, my hoodies. Everything. I love your hoodie. Tawasi, thank you, bro. These things are great. They, they, <laughs> they handle everything that I throw at it. Uh, it's the DeJulie Method, my last name, then Method. And I got a big project coming up soon. So everybody will see that. Everybody on the island, everybody in the world. And it's going to be fun. It's going to be a good time. So if you are in the Long Island area or if you are in the Franklin Square, uh, Oceanside, Long Beach area, Hit me up and let's get after it. I'll teach you everything that I know and it'll be a good time. It will. It will, man. It's a great fucking time. I love training with you. I love your energy. Thank and you, like I said, it's I'm I'm so happy that we became more mm -hmm. close as friends and on the professional side of things. Yes, You're sir. the fucking shit. Thank you, man. I appreciate you coming down today, hanging with Kenji and I. Uh, cheers and reigns with me. Cheers, let's do it one man. more time. Appreciate you, brother. Thank you, man. And appreciate on a big it. episode 26, my man Tom stopped by, chopped it up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more. Peace. Peace.